Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 64. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 63 to 66. Hey, trick number 64 is awesome. We're going to talk about the database functions in Excel. And we're actually at the end of this video, we'll see five different ways to do the same thing and then compare each one of the five ways and see the advantages and disadvantages. But first, we need to talk about functions like d sum and d average. Now, they are for databases, which means in Excel you have a database. In Excel, this is called an Excel table or an Excel list. Field names at the top, variables in columns, so sales for every one of the records, there's the sales for every one of the records, there's the sales rep, and rows are records. You cannot have blanks. It's best not to have blanks anywhere, but you definitely, this none of this will work if there's a whole blank column or whole blank row. And you need to have all of your other data in the sheet not touching it directly. All right, first we need to name this table. And this is, um, we, we need the field names too. So I'm going to highlight all the field names at the top and then control shift down arrow. And I'm going to come up to my name box and I'm going to type DDD, enter. Now I've had that, have that named. All right, let's scroll over here and we'll look at D sum. And what we want to do is add up all the sales for Whole Foods customer WF. Now, we will later look at some other um, ways of doing this, like uh, sum product, an array formula, sum if. But database functions are slightly different in that when you type your criteria, for us it's going to be WF, you have to have the field name also. So this is sort of like advanced filter in Excel or um, an access query if you are doing access. You need the field name. All right, let's see how to do this. I'm going to say equals D sum. And it needs the database first. So I'm going to say DDD comma, and then it needs the field. Well, I need to either type in sales or click on this uh, right here. I have it set up that way. So if I want to change it, it can change. Another way to do this is it, if um, you do have a, a cell right there, you could actually double click that. And if you hit F9, it'll put the right thing in, which is the since it's a word, it's in quotes. I'm going to control Z. We'll do that later. But here it is, database the field, but comma, and now the criteria. And this is different than some if and some other functions. Instead of just clicking on the criteria, you have to have the field name above and the criteria below. There it is. That'll work. Close parentheses and enter. And that is all of the sales for whole food added up. All right, let's try D average. We'll average all the sales and see what the average sale was for WF equals D D average, the database is DDD, comma, the field is sales, and this time I'm just going to uh, double click that and hit F9. You also could just type that out, right? But just got to be in quotes. Comma, and then the criteria, same thing. We're going to add it up field name, criteria below. Enter, and there's the average, the average, 104,350. Uh, now, the max equals D max. The database is DDD, comma. The field is sales, comma. And the criteria is field name. Oops. The criteria is field name and criteria below, and enter. So the maximum sale to. WF was 148,859. Now let's do uh, two criteria, and then we'll do two criteria and see a bunch of different ways to do it. Let's multiply all the sales we find that are Whole Foods and sales rep Joel equals D product. You need the database, DDD comma, the field is still going to be sales, comma, but the criteria, whoops, we have two criteria. What do you do? No problem. It's still got to be field name and criteria, field name and criteria. But if you have two, you just put them right next to each other, field name, criteria, field name, criteria. It will consider this an and because they're next to each other. Enter. And that's a huge number. It actually took the sales. I think there's two of them in this data set and multiplied them. That's kind of silly, but that 
is an illustration of d product and two criteria. Now, let's come down here and let's do d sum for these two criteria. We want to add up all the sales that Joel had for Whole Foods. So equals d sum. I did that. D U S. Database is DDD, comma, the field is sales, comma, and the criteria is, I keep doing that. I wish I knew how to type. I'm going to highlight that field name criteria, field name criteria, and then enter. And there is adding all of the Joel's sales to Whole Foods. Now, I want to show you a bunch of ways to do this. And I have notes over here. And actually, if you scroll over after you download this, it's got all the formulas there, too. Let's look at a 2007 method. Now, let's think about back to 2003. We didn't have some if. So if we wanted to do two criteria, if we had a database, we could use dsum. But if we didn't, we had to switch to array formulas. But let's look at a new feature in 2007, sum ifs equals sum ifs. It's just the sum if that we know and love from earlier versions, but with an s on the end. It needs the sum range and then as many criteria. I think it's up to 60. So sum range, hey, we have to go over and actually highlight the sales. And do not include the field name when you're using uh, these remaining methods. Click in the top and control shift down arrow, and then I'm going to hit F4. F4. That locked it and jumped our screen back to where the formula was. That's the sum range. Criteria range one, we're going to say uh, sales rep. So I click on the top, control shift down arrow, and F4. We don't need those dollar signs because we're not copying this formula anywhere, but it's nice because it actually jumps right uh, the screen back to where you're creating your formula. The criteria, well, we're going to put in quotes Joel, and hopefully I'll spell it right. You could click on a cell also. Now it's asking for criteria range two. So you scroll over, and we're going to get customer. Click on the top, control shift down arrow, F4, comma. And now I'm going to put in quotes, WF, end quote, close parentheses. Let me see if I can. Uh, blow this screen up just a little bit. And there is the formula, Enter. Now let's see a couple of old school methods. Um, I'm going to start with some product. It's lying to in an array formula, but you don't have to use Control Shift Enter. Uh, equals some product. And we need to do uh, a couple things here. And in parentheses, so inside the first parentheses, we're going to say, hey, we're going to look at this whole uh, sales rep range right there, control shift down arrow to send the cursor down, and then F4. And that has to be equal to, in quotes, Joel, end quote, close parentheses. So that's the first series of true falses. Times, open parentheses, and we need to get our second series of true falses by highlighting the customer at the top, control shift down arrow, F4, equals, and then in quotes, whole foods. And uh, end quote, close parentheses. And then finally, those are two true falses being multiplied. So we multiply that times the whole sum range, the sales range. So I click on the top, Control Shift down, now F4, move that screen tip out of the way. And there it is. Uh, I'm gonna actually going to highlight this whole criteria here because we're going to use that exact same thing in two more formulas, Control C, and then Enter. Notice I didn't have to do Control Shift Enter. Now, in this one, I like sums because I know the keyboard shortcut, Alt equals. And I just need to paste Control V, that same series of true falses for Joel, true falses for Whole Foods, and multiply it times the uh, sales range. and then. Instead of just hitting Enter, you have to Control Shift Enter. Finally, there's um, if you used to know how to do sum if wizard in Excel, you could say equals sum open parentheses if open parentheses. Now I'm running out of time, so I just did this one real quick here. Sum if those are equal to Joel, then if those are equal to Whole Foods, and that gives you a series of true falses. Then take whatever from there. That actually, if you did um, the 
sum if wizard in earlier versions, that would automatically create that. I'm going to control shift enter. Now, when would you use each one of these? If you uh, are in 2007, you can use that one right there. If you are in earlier versions and you have it set up as a database, that certainly is an excellent choice there. Some product, that one's good because you don't have to do control shift enter. Uh, I like this one because I know the keyboard shortcut for some, and I can do that quicker than the others, escape. And then sum if, if you have the wizard, I usually don't use that one. If you look in older spreadsheets, this one is very common, very common. All right, that's some about database functions and some alternatives. All right, see you next trick.